In my native Wapichan tongue, I'm saying I'm so happy to be here. Mr. Speaker and everyone, I bring greetings from the residents of the Upper Takatu, Upper Esequibo Region 9, and from my indigenous brothers and sisters across the length and breadth of the land of many waters. Mr. Speaker, I had listened attentively on November 26 to the budget, budget presentation presented by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mr. Winston da Costa Jordan. Mr. Speaker, I, like the thousands of Guyanese across this land, can only conclude that this budget is of perceptions. It's a budget of unrealistic forecast. And once again, we see in the 2019 budget, like other budget, previous budgets, wasteful spending and extravagance. Mr. Speaker, permit me to respond some, to some utterances that was made previously by speakers on that side of the House. And I begin with the Honorable Minister of Social Cohesion. I had tried to listen attentively, but unfortunately was not hearing very clear what the Honorable Minister was saying because I have noted his face was buried in his speech. <laughs> to the Honorable Minister, what has been the direct result of this expenditure in your department? Our sports men and women convert their participation in their sporting activities in making a comfortable living in this country? And this answer is blatantly no. No, no. Mr. Speaker, to the Honorable Minister, sports success is more than recreation and buildings. It is about becoming world-class athletes. And this is the way we have to move forward in showcasing Guyana's talent on a global stage. Be reminded, Minister. And now to my Amerindian brother who was denied of participating at the National Athletics Championships recently. Minister, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would like the minister to investigate this incident. No Amerindian in this country should be denied. None. None, Mr. Speaker. We call, we on this side, call on the Honorable Minister and the Minister of Education to launch a thorough investigation because this athlete had excelled in his, in the categories of events that he had participated in Region 2, and he was the champion. Mr. Speaker, we will not rest until this is investigated, and, and the child, the pupil name is Rivaldo Canai. Mr. Speaker, kindly allow me the opportunity to thank the residents of Letham and Region 9 as a whole, the beautiful region I represent in this honorable house, for voting overwhelmingly for the People's Progressive Party Civic at the recently concluded local government elections where the PPPC took control of Letham Town Council and moved our councillors from three out of 10 to six out of 10. In so doing, rejecting the poor governance and leadership of this APNU AFC coalition government. As a matter of fact, the AFC got zero seat. Reject Bolkan. While the government has already signaled its intention to heartlessly punish councillors which voted against them, the, PPC, the PPPC is committed to good governance and good representation in the face of any threats. Mr. Speaker, I have heard from my colleagues on this side of the House that the budget lacks vision. 
I would like to add that not only the budget lacks vision, it is the entire government over that side lacks vision. A budget is just a means by which you implement your vision. Imagine three and a half years in office and there is no developmental strategy. We keep making references to green state development strategy, but a year and a half have left into this APNUFC government and the strategy is not yet completed. One of the first things a new government must do, and listen, do it. It's to outline its vision. That's first and foremost. By the time the strategy is completed, the APNUAFC government's tenure is over and the PPPC will more than likely scrap it and create a new strategy for the better development of all Guyanese. What is more funny is that all, all the members of the government on that side of the house who keep speaking about the Green State Development Strategy, ask them what it is and what is the plan? And they are clueless, except of a vision green, the color green. Look, we have some very serious questions and challenges facing us at the, as a nation, one of which is our energy. The government's solution is throw more money at the problem. The Minister of Finance and Minister of Business is just living now in a la la land. Hoping that the fairy godmother will come and present the solution to our energy problem under their pillow while they sleep day and night at the wheel. No one major renewable energy supply facility has been commissioned, but we keep saying we are going green. The only green, Mr. Speaker, we are going now is in the green hard guava season. Mr. Speaker, the PPP knew that hydro was the solution. We pursued a Amalia Hydro false electricity project, which would have seen our cost of energy go down to single digits with not one penny of debt. If the APNUFC did not kill the project, we would have already had electricity there last year. What's worse is that the government come into office and started off by saying that the project was criminal, only to turn around and say that the Amalia is back on the table. The hypocrisy and deceit is real, Mr. Speaker. It is just, that the Mar it is just like the Marriott they wanted to turn into a hospital. Now many of the government ministers wine and dine there. <laughs> then recently, Mr. Speaker, we heard that there will be a gas to power project with Exxon. Well, lo and behold, the government has told Exxon to put a hole on the feasibility study for that very project. So keep living in La La Land, ministers. <laughs> And to Minister Gaskin, you're also in La La Land. <laughs> and you dare talk about manufacturing when you don't have cheap and reliable energy. I wish you could come to reality. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we have serious challenges, but the government does not know how to address them or just does not care. Let's address youth education and jobs. First, thousands of kids are leaving school without the basic qualifications, and there is no program to address it. The school cash grant, while it was not enough, it helped the families which were the most vulnerable and the ones which needed the most help, and the APNU AFC government scrapped it by no notice or anything signaled that the program would have been scrapped. No mention of it in the flowery manifesto neither. What is the plan to address the youth, the jobs for youth? Nothing. Three and a half years and the youth is, are, are unemployed. 
Mr. Speaker, look at the government. The government does not even have any young person sit seating on their side of the house. Mr. Speaker, to come to, come to a conclusion that this, this government has no interest in the youth except for GOG. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Guyana is bleeding. Guyana is suffering from the visionless APNU AFC coalition government's maladministration. No area being spared from the economic, social, and infrastructural neglect by this coalition government. Mr. Speaker, residents living in the hinterland and riverine communities have seen not only, not only Mr. Speaker, the, their living standards drop, but have also witnessed an assault to their dignity and rights. Mr. Speaker, Despite the, the PPPC government leaving a budget of 10.7 US, that's US 10.7 million for the Amerindian land titling, not one single land title has been issued to date, Mr. Speaker. Not one. Billions, Mr. Speaker, under the PPPC established GRIF for indigenous villages and ITC development. What happened, Mr. Speaker? All we see under this government is a dismal performance. Failures, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the 2019 national budget is a failure, like the previous ones presented by the coalition. The budget failed to deliver more jobs, failed to lower the cost of living in our country, Fail to cut wasteful spending, fail to cut government extravagance, fail to focus on crime fighting, fail to expand the social and economic infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, the APNUFC government have collected billions in new taxes per annum, yet removed the cash grant for the nation's school children. The water and electricity subsidy for pensioners and yet cannot pay the nation's teachers increased wages. Mr. Speaker, every aspect, Mr. Speaker, every aspect of the Guyanese life is being taxed heavily to support our ever-growing government that has more that has more ministers in any other cabinet in the Caribbean. More departments established, more advisors more wastage and more extravagance. Mr. Speaker, Guyanese are paying less, more for less. Guyanese are paying more for less. Less services, less health care, and little or no drugs in our hospitals across the country, Honorable Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, Every sector of our economy, sugar, gold, rice, mining, construction, retail trade in the Rupununi is crumbling because of neglect, incompetence, and mismanagement by those over there in the coalition government. Over 30,000 jobs have been lost, Mr. Speaker, and the, the budget speaks for itself with no creation of jobs to, to have the 30,000 be rehired. No new investments in our country, Mr. Speaker, because we have a government that is myopic and visionless. Oh. Mr. Speaker, crime is rampant in every area. No Guyanese is safe. Even the ministers are not safe. We can see two, three, four, five bodyguards opening doors and closing the vehicle doors. They are not safe, Mr. Speaker, yet the budget does not address the security in our country. Blatant corruption and mismanagement are costing our nation taxpayers 
billions of dollars every year, Mr. Speaker, with no returns for them. Incompetent contract negotiations are squandering the resources of our nation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, hinterland air travel and freight. Honourable have Member, new you have five minutes remaining. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Hinterland and air, hinterland air travel and freight have had VAT added to them. The indigenous people were robbed of their solar panels, Mr. Speaker. We need answers to where are our solar panels. We on this side of this house call on the coalition government to stop. This government must stop. Stop the increase, massive borrowing and depletion of gold and other reserves. Stop the extravagance and wasteful spending on travel food, rental, vehicles, and other things that do not bring direct benefit to the people of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, the indigenous people call on this coalition government to act now. Act now and reverse the increased tax burden on Guyanese, which sees the collection of 60 billion more per annum. Act now and initiate new infrastructure projects not only complete projects envisioned and started under the former PPPC administration for sustainable economic activity. Improve working conditions for all health workers in our country, Honorable Minister of Health. Rehired 1,972 Amerindian service officers now. Fully fund the village improvement plans developed for Amerindian communities. Do it now. Advance efforts to move the Stahl Amerindian Land Titling Program forward. Expedite the maintenance of interior roads and bridges. Mr. Speaker, I would like to touch on the Honorable Minister of, <laughs> Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, the Minister within, who, who gave who gave a synopsis of the Hayes program, but the Honorable Minister failed to address the unaccountability of that project. 865 million according to the according to the Auditor General report. The minister alluded to the youths are now involved in cattle rearing. I was wondering if the minister went to the ranch of the Honorable. I was wondering if the Honorable Minister went and visited the Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Ranch in North Rupununi, but had failed to recognize that um, under the PPP, under the tenure of Dr. Barat Jagdeo's presidency, we had started the President Youth Choice Initiative, and to date, to date, Minister, the youth across Rupununi are into cattle rearing since from then. Mr. Speaker, after the completion of the Honorable Minister's um, long fairy tale, I was left, like many others across here, lukewarm. Nothing addressing the fundamental issues affecting the Amerindians in this country. I remember you have two minutes remaining. Mr. Speaker, I now turn my attention to the Honorable Minister of Sorry, Honorable Minister John Adams, who spoke about <laughs> who spoke about equitable distribution of the bees. M Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, that is that is another lala. He's living on a lala land. The Honorable Me uh, Member Minister, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member should be the last to talk about equitable distribution in this government. Equitable. Should be the last person to talk about equitable. Mr. Speaker, the PPPC call on the stubborn APNULC coalition government to reverse, reverse the hardship measures and restore the policies that would improve the lives of the Guyanese people. Mr. Speaker, with this, I join my colleagues on this side of the house 
objecting this budget that, bear, that will bear no fruit for the Guyanese people to, accom to eat, to be satisfied. There is no way forward for the Guyanese people in this budget, Mr. Speaker. Hence, the Guyanese people will not be living the good life until the People's Progressive Party civic return. Thank you.